Hi everybody, I've got a 15 minute session and I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and get started. Okay, this, this is going to be interesting. All right, so please explore my fears of being powerful. I know I am afraid of being physically and financially powerful and have not been able to release that fear. I suspect it's from when I was very young or a past life because I feel very it's very difficult to get to it. Got it. All right, so fear of being physically and financially powerful. Hmm. That's a really good request. Okay, I'm going to relax here and let's see what, what we discover. So it's quiet right now and it's it's a bit um, it's not like I can fluidly move forward or even pause I feel like I'm a bit, bit trippy as I'm going through here and I also feel I'm up here like I'm up there and then I'm down here at the same time while I'm kind of tripping forward so it's very awkward and I'm trying to get my feet um, about me. I'm trying to get my my feet settled. I need to just take one step at a time. And you have a lot of tight spots in your energy field. One of them is around the throat and one of them around the third eye and the top of the head. So you've got like a, this whole head region has got a block as well. That's what I'm feeling first and foremost, but you also have blocks in your heart too. I mean, you pretty much we got to do like a full a full chakra clearing thing here, but let me let me just keep moving forward. <sighs> All right, yeah, you <laughs> So, it's not easy to move forward because because you've got a lot of jams going on. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to just start with this one. It's just black, everywhere is black, but I can feel density here, so I'm just touching it with my hands. And I ask you, what are you afraid of? And I say, well, I hear that you're afraid of being powerful, physically, financially powerful. Do you feel that you relate to this? Okay, this is going to get a little gross. Um, what what the image is that comes next, it's almost like uh, there's a, I don't know, nine-year-old child, and it's kind of like the eyes have been cut, and the eyes have blood on the top and the bottom, and they're just, they're just, it looks very gross right now. And it's looking at me, and he's desperate to heal this. He's desperate to heal this. He keeps saying this. But at the same time, it's very hard to understand because he, he's so jammed up in his throat as well. It's almost like he's choking on his words. And he just wants you to see. He just wants you to see what is wrong and, and to help me, help me, help me. And fix me, fix me. Wow. I'm going to have to slow this down. I'm going to slow this way down. Because when you got a throat block, it's, it's sort of, I start having throat block because I got to feel what it's like to be you. So when I, when I slow things down, then that helps you relax more, okay? And it helps me move through your energy fields more fluidly. This is majorly helping just simply to relax you here majorly helping your whole mental body region and your emotional gut is really warm and it feels nice. Oh, gosh. That boy is starting to disappear and I'm entering into yet a new scene and this one's also a bit disturbing. It looks like many ivory and they're giant, they're huge. They're pure white, it's beautiful, but they're like giant crosses. And then there's, uh, it's um, dug around the crosses 
and it's a huge space. It's like walking into a giant field, like a giant battlefield. And instead of seeing dead bodies, you see beautiful giant size, like the length of, of like a bus and then a cross. You know, it's, in, it's like Jesus on the cross, but it's this pure white, beautiful cutouts of crosses lying flat on a giant field. And there's lots of them. And they're pretty. They have some or, um, ornamental kind of trim, okay? And there's a trench dug around each and every cross and is full of blood, okay? Yeah, this is really, this is, uh, there's a lot of anger going on here and it's really igniting the third eye and your eyes are getting very angry and you're a man. I mean, you're you're a very strong man. You're a very strong man. You're kind of like a gladiator, or like a Spartan, but you're you're very um, strong. Like you are muscular. You're a strong, muscular man. I could imagine you in some sort of like a, a gladiator movie or you know, Roman times or something, um, fighting in a battle or war. You're very strong. Like I can feel how incredibly strong you are. I mean. You are meant to survive the elements. You're meant to survive the most extreme experiences. You, you're tough. You're ridiculously tough. So, um, I mean, you could be in really bad, beat up shape and recover from it because you're ridiculously tough. I can feel that about you. You have no ability to bring back these people that have died. So every one of these big crosses is like a reflection of, um, of a battle and all the people that died or one person at a time. Like You can't bring back all the people that had died. You say this to me. And then you show me this big field with all the white crosses. You can't bring them back. And you tell me that strength is good for nothing. Um, strength gives, gives you nothing. If you can't bring these people back, then what good is strength? Strength creates this. Strength um, creates this. And strength does not bring the people back. I, you're, you're really, sh you're struggling with this. And I tell you, it's not for you to bring the people back. It's for you to simply be the strong man and to have the experience. And to even have the experience of loss and sorrow. But you don't have to be the one to bring these people back. It's just for you to have the experience. This is a huge attachment going on here. You start to show me um, lifetimes of having to watch people die and you can't bring them back. And the reason why these lifetimes happen is because of this lifetime. So you're very strong, warrior, incredibly strong. You're very tough. Um, but you have a kind of like um, an epiphany or... Um, you come to a point in in your life experience where this you're waking up to something and it's bothering you in an extreme way. And what you say is you can't bring them back. Strength does not bring them back. But this creates an attachment, all right? So now you got to live lifetimes where you're going to see people die over and over and over again and you're not going to be able to bring them back. Well, it's not for you to bring them back. You're going to keep having lifetimes of people dying until you can say, I'm okay with this. I'm okay that people have um, their life experience and then their death experience and that happens when it is meant to happen. It has nothing to do with me other than for me to um, process the experience of that person's death and to be an acceptance of that. <sighs> you really... Um, What's the word here? Resent. Um, there's a resentment also towards strength. And it's it surprises me. 
I mean, it's bitter. It's It's got an acidic vibe to it. And it's resentment and hate. And the eyes, again, are really angry. And, I, and it, it reflects back to the child where the eyes are cut. And the blood isn't dripping down, but I can see the eyes are cut. It looks really weird. It's mutilated and gross. And it's red all through here. And so let me let me just keep uh, keep going forward with this. Okay, yeah, so you have you have a lot more going on here than just this lifetime. You have so many weird knots in your energy field. <laughs> There's a lot of overlapping stuff here, okay? And it must be because you're noticing, I don't, I've got this fear of being physically and financially powerful. So this physically powerful thing brought you suffering. When you're physically powerful, when you are strong, and I mean strong and tough, it brought you suffering, okay? So you're afraid of being that because if you become strong and powerful, um, you're going to bring in suffering. That's what the program says. That's what your soul has decided. That's not true at all. It just was a lifetime experience and then the attachment took place and then that encouraged more lifetime experiences so you could work on acceptance. But you don't need all of those lifetimes. You just needed to, to just work on acceptance. And now you can be strong and powerful and you can be an acceptance of being strong, acceptance of of people dying, acceptance of everything, and acceptance of yourself. That's the next one. So acceptance of self is another big thing here. We're not to the financial one just yet, but acceptance of self is another big thing. I'm going to this uh, really strong guy. And I, I mean, this is changed. This is moving so much energy around your heart. It's moving a lot of energy around your heart. It feels great. It feels really, really good. And I give him a hug, this part of you. And I say, I'm okay with you. Are you okay with you? And I put a mirror here. When he looks into his eyes, again with the eyes, um, he sees in the reflection people screaming. So much death. I say, what if we took out the word death? And I say, what if it's so much new life? What if we altered your perception of what death is? He starts to cry and he kind of clenches up in his mind and his uh, processes of his thoughts. He's like literally like clenching his fist, but it's like clenching his thoughts and like really squeezing his eyes and <laughs> he's like, <"Ur." laughs> but he's not angry. It's almost like he just got a sudden horrifying headache or something <laughs> because he's been so attached to death and suffering that for him to be given this new inspiration of seeing it differently, it's like totally freaking out the whole program. <sighs> and I'm just still giving him time to process this. He just, he uh, says, my eyes hurt, my eyes hurt, my eyes hurt. There's a new scene and this too has to do with death and dying. Nothing about money yet, okay? This is really hard to get to because it's like I'm looking down and I have this much to look through, okay? So it's like looking through binoculars and I'm looking down like this and I'm looking down a long ways and there's some things obstructing my view but I see a room down there, um, like a place, and there's a, a bed, and it's like a medical bed, 
And it's got um, blue. I don't know. It seems like um, it's not a sheet, though. It's more like, um, I don't know, some other material. And there's some doctors. So let me see if I can get down there. You're clenching again. And when you're clenching, you start to close the scene. You close it up. So I'm going to relax you down. May I say it does it doesn't your relationship with the suffering is going to create more suffering. So would you want to fall in love with suffering? Would you want to date somebody and that somebody is actually suffering? You want to date suffering? So um, when we have an attachment, it's like a relationship. It's like a lover. So your lover is now suffering and you will never leave suffering ever. And suffering now will never leave you either. So this attachment to suffering here not just death, but suffering and um, acceptance of self. You see how you got a lot of weird knots in the way and they're all kind of over overlapping? So, suffering. <sighs> you, your, your heart has got a lot of shifting energy here, so give me a second. <sighs> Very positive shifts going on here. You're you're almost you've almost broken through this jam, okay? You you're really close, and you're still the appearance of the same really tough guy, and you should admire you should admire that man. And that man is you also you, and he could use somebody who, if he can't love himself, could you love him? And if you could love him, would it be enough for him to be able to love himself? So now, instead of being afraid, you can see that it was all about a weakness of self-love and understanding about life and death and suffering and all these other things that go along with processing reality. But once we can relax more once we can start to just accept who we are and be thankful that the epiphany and this really hardcore vision comes that challenged your soul a great deal you've reached a point where you're wanting to take a look at this and you're wanting to heal this and move on from it and he, he needs, he needs a hug. <laughs> this very strong man has a very loud weakness. And he could use a hug. Because strong, tough people need hugs too. There's yet another, I mean, there's another scene and it's sort of um, this strong man. But it's shifting into something like a Native American type man. And he has a very loud battle cry. And like uh, an axe in his hand. And he's got, I mean, there's something about his hair and he's got face paint. It's almost like it's its coming, coming back and it's like shaved on the side or something. I mean, he looks like a wild crazy warrior guy. I mean, he looks like he is insane almost. <laughs> he's got this wild war cry and he looks like he's going to rip some people apart. Seriously. He, he's sort of working with the, the forces of chaos um, as his warrior guides. And he's ridiculously strong and threatening and intimidating like nobody's business. 
So there's power for you as well, right? And strength. And this one too is rising up to the surface. And again, with all the blood and him having to see a lot of death. And he is, he brings a lot of death. But they're not showing me what his acceptance, um, level of acceptance is with this. They're just showing me his passion or his identity and what his accomplishments were based on this role and identity. Does that make him a bad guy? Or does that just, is that just his experience, his his calling within his own heart and soul to explore being this, to know what being this is like and what comes with being this. But there's really no negativity here. It's all, um, it's all coming back as love yourself and love the different versions of you that you've been because they're actually admirable people. I know it may sound, wow, the psych, the, the insane guy, he was actually admirable because he, he, he took on a role and he, he worked in that role on a very powerful level. Like he felt the energy of chaos as his own guides, like the winds of chaos, like it ran, coursed through his veins. Like there's a magic to that. And he's quite extraordinary. <laughs> So you have to love all the different reflections that you've been and be like, wow, I'm, I'm amazing, actually. Wow, I was that? That's, that's amazing. So it's going to give you that doorway to love yourself, okay? And it's not about power or strength as a negative thing, but just gifts of life experiences, okay? Financial stuff, they're not showing me anything related to that, but... Um, you could put that into action too, where um, it's just another gift. It's just another opportunity, life lessons to be explored. So, all right, I want to thank you so much for this amazing experience. Thank you for sharing on YouTube as well. And for those of you watching, if you're interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I hope you all have a great, a, a great day.